We are nothing sacred. We are nothing sacred. We are nothing sacred. With Maxwell Silverham. We are nothing sacred. With cruise control. We are nothing sacred. Sacred. <laughs> should we really be happy about this episode or should we really be introspective? I don't know, but it doesn't matter because this is the Nothing Sacred Shrink. And I'm Maxwell Silverhammer. And I'm Cruise Control. And I'm, and I'm Louis Loke. Louis, Louis, Louis Loke. Actually, I'm, I'm surprised he didn't do it like that. I, I'm Louis Loke, you know, or something. <laughs> Louis, Louis Loke. Uh uh. uh. There we go. Yeah, there it is. And now we are we are here. It is uh, our episode of Shrink Wrap for August 2022. Uh, like I said, Cruise Control, Maxwell Silverhammer, and Louis Loke are here. And we're going to talk about, you know, we, we jump around, but I, I don't know. I don't. I think this episode might be more focused because it's a very important subject. Um, yeah. and not in, uh, or interesting subject and, and important as well. Um, and it's about, uh, we're going to, well, our focus might mainly is about grief. I guess that that's kind of like the way we're going with this one, right? Yeah, right yeah. Yep. All right. Yep. Uh huh. So let's let's talk about the basics. Of, first of all, I have a question for for Louis because you actually have been studying up on on these kind of things uh, with your uh, degrees and and everything. Is the five uh, stages of grief actually something that is is used, or is that something that's that's like that's pop psychology and is not really considered uh, usable or anymore, or was it? What, what do you feel about that? Well, I think it, I think it was usable in the past, but just like Freud, right? <clears throat> so, I, if anybody knows about Freud, oh, he has some doesn't? weird stuff. He has some weird stuff going on, you know, talking about the psychosexual stages and things like that and whatever, right? Right. But the whole idea of the the id, the ego, and the super ego is kind of similar to this whole idea of you know, um, <clears throat> you know, it's something that stays right it's something that actually sticks around and it's like well yeah you know some of that stuff might actually be viable even though it's not scientifically proven right yeah true, but true. and then, so the same thing comes with this with elizabeth kubler ross's uh five stages of grief is that yeah there may be some substance to it but it's not entirely you know of course everybody grieves in a different way yeah, and that sort try. of thing it tries to be cut <clears throat> It tries to yeah, like yeah. It's, it tries to it, it, it tries to and, and those stages, a very complicated issue. Exactly. Right. right. Exactly. And those those stages don't necessarily uh, they may not come in succession like that. Or they or they might not come at all. Like in other True. words, you might you might just accept it as fact. Like okay, fine. You know, this person died, or well, this I, not necessarily the, the the death of a person too. Like you know, just the loss of a friendship or a loss of a relationship. You just well, might just be. I'm actually gonna into open acceptance. Up, I'm gonna op- I'm gonna open up a little bit here. Um, about, about my, my dad's death a little bit. Now, okay. now the All first, right. the first year, um, my dad died in 2010. Um, he was diagnosed with uh, pro- uh, pancreatic cancer in December of 2009, and he was he died on April 1st, 2010, which is a great date for my dad to die because he was a funny dude. And so, but, but anyway. <laughs> So that's a, that's one of those things you apply to like and like that. Like, right, like oh well, hey. aspect of it's like oh my god, it's dead and it's fucking first to be. We're like that is it, you know you know what I'm saying like you 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 try to make it more than this, but the point is that afterwards the first year was just I, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I had no idea. I think because shock is, and that's kind of a, one of the uh, one of the things that people don't understand about shock is it's like a blanket. It's like a like a heavy lead blanket over your whole entire for, from what i experienced like right right um so and it doesn't it doesn't go away like you think it goes away but i think you just get used to it for a while um but the point is the first year i was i, I had no idea what the hell i was doing but i i never got to the point where i was like god i wish he was here like i, I never got angry or it was just he's gone and you know i kind of skipped those steps i didn't get defiant and like oh well, this is angry, you know, why does right. it happen? Why did it, did it, did, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I think it's because we knew, uh, we knew how bad it was in the beginning. And so I had a couple of, some time. Oh, yeah. To, so you're but, prepared. But, but, 
but I think I think that, I know where you're going with that, and that that is kind of like that pop culture idea of grief, right? Um, right. Right. Yeah. And it, and I mean, we might as well discuss it real quick. I, I have I had a I had an idea of discussing it real quick with when it comes to C nineteen. I don't even know if we can say it now. Oh, the cove. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we could say it right now, but right, but like, if you think about it, like, if anybody, I don't know if you guys have caught it, but I have. I caught it once. It was it was very mild, but I still caught it. I suspect I may have had it at one point. Um, mm-hmm. I, I had a cold, but that's all it was. It was just a cold. I mean, it wasn't anything yeah. earth shattering. You know what I'm saying? So, so, but here was my process, and I honestly think that I actually went through the five stages of grief. Really? When it came to when it came yeah. to this. You know, I actually was like, ah, this ain't COVID. Oh, I said it. <laughs> uh, that's all right. Uh, this ain't the C. This ain't the C word. Uh, I would you know, this, fuck, is just, this, this is just this is just allergies. Yeah, look at him. Yeah, this is just allergies. This is not, you know, this is nothing. Uh, you know, I always I, I get a little bit sick. It's it's okay. It's not that big of a deal, right? Right. And then you go through that little kind of like the anger process where it's like, well, fuck, could it be COVID? Dang it, I don't know. You know, what the hell? You know, it could be. Right. <clears throat> and then you go through this bargaining process, which is the third stage. And bargaining is kind of weird because it's like, it's almost like you go through like something like, you know, uh, uh, well, what if it is? You know, you start ruminating about it. Like, well, oh. who, did I, who did I get exposed to? Or who was I around so, that was coughing so, and so, doing all that stuff, right? Let, let me stop you real quick. <clears throat> because uh-huh. we're, uh, cause we're, normally we're talking about grief as just about a death but Correct. grief 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 actually and i want to i want to go into this more later on because i have, I have that's mm-hmm. my kind of take on it but grief yeah. is not just about death no of about course not loss yeah yep. exactly well like when you break up you know when i or, broke up with michelle or, I was or about regret about or or i don't know how it, it, it grief is is a very complex emotion it's not about just like well your mom Correct. died or your dad died it's Correct. about a lot of a lot of like a lot of things that that it, what would you what would you describe it as actually let's just let's kind of get back to the point of what what is really grief what, what is it really um, i shit. think it's i think it's one of those things where it's the the unexpected happens right you never you never expected this thing to happen and and that's why i think it kind of was a little bit diminished for you because you were kind of like okay at first you were caught in the dark when he first was diagnosed right yeah but, but yeah i said that, but I said as it, it as it went along, it was like, well, I know he's going to die. I just don't know when. I don't know what the process is. I hope he doesn't suffer too much. But that's basically you knew in your well, heart. Like, hearts kind of, die, but right? four months ain't a lot of time. Like, like if you're talking it's years, not. it really is. And you think really like, is. oh, you think, well, I'm accepting this. I, no, I, I no, you don't. No. Think it. But but the point is, I know I understand what you're saying. It's not like an instant, like, hey, you, you come in, you know, you wake up in the morning, you said your parents died in a car crash. Correct. Like, right. Ah. It's like there's right, so right. many different variations of grief. So I think of course grief and like grief, you know, just like just like but like 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 when you talk about like losing a relationship or losing a friend or you know yeah. a friend, uh, you know, I went through a little <clears throat> sort of a slight grieving process when it came to you know um, I had quote unquote friends in in college Mm. that I seriously thought, you know, and this was like last year, I seriously thought we were going to keep in touch. No one keeps in touch. And we had like, we had like a group text and everything and no one writes in there. No one says anything to anyone. And I'm like, wow, that is crazy how close we were. And now that we've graduated, that's all we were. Yeah. That well, just sucks. And, and, it, and it makes you feel like, I'm sorry, Max, we haven't actually had you talk for us. So let's, what, what are your feelings on this? Oh, I was just going to say, well, like when I got hit by that car years ago. And remember, I was, I couldn't, pretty much couldn't walk for like a month. And I went through different emotions, man. And this is kind of what I wanted to get into is the fact that, you know, grief isn't just being sad all the time. Sometimes there's a false positivity with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, or, yeah, I'm, like, a, yeah, you know, I'm doing better, man. Things are getting better things, and, and you're like way, way positive and you're going, wait a minute. What, you know, that something's off about that. You know what I mean? Or, or even when you're in that shock mode, you're, you, you're kind of euphoric in a way it's because your, your mind is going, you have to fucking just slam with fucking endorphins or whatever that one is. Um, yeah. 
And that whole time, like you're sitting there, you have no options. You can't go anywhere. You can't move. No, no. So you're, you're confined, and, you know, to certain areas and, and just you, your life has been interrupted. So I definitely had some grief there. And uh, those, dude, I had a lot of different emotions. I was really angry sometimes. I was really sad sometimes. Sometimes I was overly, you know, happy and positive. So, you know, you, you go through it. There is, yes, and happiness can be an emotion with grief. Mm -hmm. Funny or, enough. Or let's, let's bring up, if you don't mind, Max, bring up um, um, Ticket Chip. Oh, ticket. Okay. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. When, when, you know, you, you thought, oh, I, it's just a cat. It's just a cat. I don't, I don't, you know, it's just a cat, no big deal or whatever. Oh, I got this cat. So I have this cat. But instead what happened was it was really fucking hard for you. Oh yeah. So it, oh, yeah. It was tough. You know, because you had, it's almost like, I think it's about to change or, or just drastic, just massive like loss. Well, yeah. Something that turns right. your life upside yeah. down. Somewhere. Massive loss is, is, is cause for grief or massive change that, that turned you well, another situation know. was when I got the, the bed bugs, you know, and I, I, I like my life was turned upside fucking down. I had to move out yeah, of my but, house. But and, I don't think know. that's that's not necessarily grief. Grief. I'm talking to more about the loss of a loved one or loss of someone where they're never. Well, but like, like you said, though, grief isn't always just death. It could be a lot of shit. Anything that changes your life around and makes. Yeah, I think so. You know, yeah, so. makes you, so? you have a drastic so. yeah. change, you know, like yeah. uh, same thing with getting hit by the car. I mean, that was. Yeah fuck dude i couldn't walk or i couldn't do like doing very simple things to like get something out of the refrigerator was a problem yeah and it's like it's almost like because you all you're missing something that was before something that was so natural for you and better right and so your life was better before this thing happened yeah actually this is actually brings up uh, what i was actually going to talk about and we can all incorporate this all into the conversation what i was going to talk about is the grief of knowing that people in your life that are still alive that are still there, yep. but that you know that you, that you, it's called radical acceptance. I think we talked about this before, but, but the idea is that, you know, they're not going to change. They're going to be the same people. So you have to push them out of your lives, but they're not dead. They're still there. And in fact, they, right. you might have connection with other family members and friends. So they're never out of your lives completely. So this grief is like, it's like it's a different kind of grief because you know you can't change them, you know, and you but you know you can't still be the same person because you're not going to accept their bullshit, and right. you're not going to accept right. their abuse or whatever. It's like relationships, uh, any kind of relationship. So you're like, wow, this person's not dead, but you're grieving them because they're dead in the way that you can trust them. Right, if that makes sense. They're well, dead in the way but it's it's what you thought as a relationship, as a friendship or whatever, wasn't what it you know what you originally you know thought it might be. Exactly. So then, you're just like, but, oh, fuck. So you're grieving that, man. You're grieving the fact that your friendship is dead um, because it isn't what you thought it was. Exactly. Because you know that they're not, they're never going to change. And maybe you aren't either. You know what I'm saying? Right. What, what do you right. feel about that, Luke? Um, yeah. I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely related to loss. Like just because they're not physically gone doesn't mean that they're you know uh you know what, what is what does people say what do people say when when the relationship breaks up like that you're dead to me right oh yeah i've heard that yeah you're dead to me so well, in a way that is a that is a death even though it's more of a figurative death than a literal one right yeah yeah but in in reality i mean even though maybe there were there's a time where the relationship ends you still probably grief the t grieve the times that were good, that were memorable. That were oh, that's the reason of, for the you know. that's, that's the point for sure. Yes, absolutely, yeah. right. That's why it's so hard to leave certain relationships for people because there's mm -hmm. good times, but then there's these fucking just god awful but, times. Now there's some people yeah. you'll kick out of your life that you don't give a shit. You're like, oh, they just got to go, right? And, and absolutely, you care yeah. less. But then there's other people that you know you really don't want you have to. to you, make, you have to make a decision. Yep, exactly. You have to make a decision for your own mental health. And when you do, mm -hmm. you have to realize that you're cutting out some times that are actually really fucking good. You right. have to fucking yeah. cut off your nose to spite your face, I guess, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Like certain just, things you just won't get to do you just, anymore. You can't do it because the, 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 the negative ramifications are worse than the positive because you're never going to be comfortable around that person because there's always a chance that shit's going to be stupid. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? So you're like, oh, well, I'm gonna cut myself from this person, even though 
sixty percent of the time, seventy percent of the time, it's great. But then that fucking thirty is just god off. Oh yeah. Oh, and then yeah. you, but then you go on, but you have to do it so that you, but you still have to, you're still missing that seventy percent or sixty percent of good fucking times. Yeah, the you know, times and, you enjoyed. Uh, and- Right. And in, in, uh, in what I in part part of what I do is I do substance abuse groups and definitely when it comes to addiction, there's some grief, whether it's grief related to like yeah. losing the 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 drug of choice, because that's what you turn to when shit hit the fan. Right. Mm. Or or losing those friends that you used to do drugs with. Or, you know, realizing that you've lost the trust of someone that, you know, that you now have to gain back. You have to gain that trust back. Right. There's so many different parts of when it comes to addiction that grief is is thrown in in the mix. And you're right, because and I've heard this from I've actually heard it from people that smoked that give up, gave up smoking. I said, you feel like you're losing a friend. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because like you said, they mm-hmm. turn to that when your things are bad. You know, oh, man, I had a yep. bad day, man. I want to fucking go shoot up or some crazy shit. Yep. So, right. yeah. And you're right. There, there is a grief behind that. We people, A lot of people don't think of it like that. But, yeah, that, that is actually mm-hmm. grief. Mm-hmm. So, damn. Complex subjects. Um, but but it also <laughs> is, is interesting um, about the long-term effects. Like, people don't realize how much... Uh, like changing your life like 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 that kind of stuff like with uh, not necessarily talking about like uh, drugs and stuff with people like losing people oh yeah family or something like yeah yeah. people don't understand how much it affects them uh well that's any kind of grief i think yeah you know i think we we made the distinction on here that anything that makes you may have a drastic change in your life like whether that person won't be in your life anymore or you're not going to be able to do something, you know what I mean? It's like, see, I don't think it's drastic because, because, like I said, there, there's there's different levels of it. Like it's it's, it's more complex. Um, well, oh, that's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. It is. Well, or being the person who gets, I mean, that's tough for them too. Like if somebody gets diagnosed with some kind of disease that's terminal, you know, yeah. and all of a sudden, you know, they're they're grieving too. And they're, and they're grieving. To see, I, see, I, that's that's kind of my my biggest. I'm gonna let it out here. One of my big, biggest fears is terminal illness, or just knowing that like there's no, like, how do you, how do you, I don't know how people deal with that shit. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like it's like grieving for yourself, but everyone else. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you're thinking about well, how are they gonna react when I'm gone. But you then know? again, you know what? You could walk uh, downstairs and slip on your on a leaf on your stairs and break your neck and die. Which yeah, yeah. Same true. damn thing is what you're thinking about your end would be, you know. But anyway. you're, but but a freak if that's just a freak accident. But I mean something, you know, where you obviously know you're dying soon. You know, that's got to fuck with you. I mean, you talk yeah, about that's gotta be like some crazy ass wow. Like yeah, yeah. Like all of a sudden you know, you human, know. human beings are the one people are the one people that actually know they're going to die, but they like they think they're going to live for a long time like a lot of people say i want to live to be 100 i want to live to be 80 or whatever right right, right yeah most people do. but seriously like i could get shot right now at 45 like you could you, we could be on the phone and somebody would blast through the glass window and boom i'm done you know yeah, yeah. yeah it, my, it my heart and my heart happen exactly my heart could say right now whoopsie and i know gone. right right yep, yep. <laughs> right all just some weird shit you, you go to sleep you don't wake up you know whatever who fucking yep. knows? We got shit happening all the time. Uh, that's that's the nature of life. But but we don't even think yeah. about that. We're all thinking about yeah. like, what's the next step in my yeah. process? Yeah, exactly. what am I going to do tomorrow Car- or whatever? Exactly. You know? Career or hobbies or whatever. Yeah. You know, you could be yeah, thinking about that forward walking in the down the stairs, and like I said, a leaf is on the stair. You don't see, and you slip, and you fall backwards, and you crack your head, and you're gone. Oh yeah, yeah. Us, yep. be, us being blindos, that happened. That probably could happen more often than. <laughs> I probably it probably does at some point. You know. <laughs> I definitely would want to go in some crazy ass shit. I want to. I would want to go like there's a lightning storm outside and I'm playing a video game, and like oh, wow. sub, all of a sudden <laughs> like shoots lightning into my fucking, uh, you know, and I like I get electrocuted while I'm playing my game. <laughs> wow. Because These that are... would at least that would at least mean I'm dying doing something I want to do. You know what I'm right. Well, but and, and it would be a quick death, so you wouldn't even know it. You know, exactly. you're just like, oh, It'd be like a, 
but, but uh, when you have those, those exactly, no, he wouldn't even, he wouldn't even hear the he wouldn't even hear the. No, <laughs> the, you wouldn't even hear that. You would just nope. you just barbecue. You oh, know. Uh, so. But then again, of course, if you believe in that, the afterlife, then it, it you know. Right, sense. right. It all does. It does. It does depend on your perspective when it comes exactly. to eternity things. Well, like that. and but, that's. Uh, I've noticed, like the Mormons, like we have a friend that's Mormon, and their attitude towards death is a lot different. You know, like they don't really. I don't think they really mourn their dead like that. You know what I mean? There's some different shit that they do because their their mindset is, well, we're all going to be at the promised land or something. You know, so <laughs> they, it's kind of an interesting perspective they have on that. But uh, yeah, we, we, I mean, fuck, we really don't know for certain. You know, it's not like we can ask any dead people, you know. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an interesting thing about how religion is used to stop mourning. To or curb to it. Curb right? it. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. Curb the grief. Yeah, curb for sure. Grief. And I think that's, but, it's not necessarily grief. I think it's suffering. I think that that's probably the really, the real word we're looking for here is suffering because because religions are there to stop why are we fucking dealing with this shit constantly what is the yeah. fucking point point? and that's what religion is there to fucking fill that hole and it's kind of like the same thing with grief like constantly fill the grief you could be like oh my god i got this lovely gerbil it's going to be my friend for life when you're six and you don't realize that it's going to live for two years and then die because that's how long they live right. and then it right. fucking dies and you're like, and then but you know but, life but uh. even even when even when you know like i have a dog uh she's tiny but she's 13 yeah and it's like dude she probably only lived to be 15 so like every day is just like counting down counting down and maybe tomorrow might be the last one i don't know you know so, so yeah, you're not, happy but, when you she when she's awake you're like oh okay she's oh alive. yeah Good. yeah 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 i do you that know. exactly that's what i do a lot, a lot of times i will i will look at i will and and really what i'm worried about though is how my wife's going to be affected because that's like her ride or die dog oh okay so she's had this dog like, for quite the long quite a while then oh we we i mean we both had it for like 12 years Oh, okay, yeah, and that's okay. the point. Like at some point, you have to realize yeah. that the the rubbers of the you know the writing is on the wall. Is that right. oh yeah no no and we <laughs> well, and I think we do, but I don't think it's I don't think it stops the grieving process. Like I don't think well, that the grieving process is going to be like any any less any hope. easier because you know going in kind of thing. Yeah yeah. yeah. Well, let's let's yeah. Well, let's all be honest ourselves. If you have parents who are alive, uh, and I'm I'm going to just lay it down. The writing's yeah. on the wall there too, and we and it's Correct. not just about pets; it's about your fucking. It's just there. You oh just yeah. No, soon yeah. it's not. It's gonna be. Well, unless something I, happens to you. I mean, it could happen to you, of course. But if this, if the just tides just turn as normal, then yeah. they're gonna do the same thing as your fucking cats and your dogs. Yep. And yep, it's just yep. right. fucking. But it's gonna be. <laughs> we all got a day. We just hope that it's. it's, it's we hope it that it's later. The same. <laughs> in terms yeah. of how you we always say, yeah, we always hope it's later. Right? Well, you know, that's the thing because you know you don't want you're like you're going. Well, hopefully it's gonna be a long time from now. You know that kind of shit. Uh, like you don't even want, really want to discuss yeah. death with your parents, and, and you don't shit. want to discuss death with anybody most of the time because we just all know it's it's most likely. And then some of us, like myself, are like, please allow my brain to be. Uh, uh, downloaded into a computer so I can continue. <laughs> hey, I would love that. <laughs> I'd love that. So I can see, survive with with some kind of robot or some shit. Hell yeah, yeah, I'm down with that. I'd do that. But see, that's I why would. I think I, I think the denial, uh, you know, the, the denial, the uh, anger, God, bargaining. Think, yeah, yeah. Anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. I think there's some some part of that that makes a little bit of sense because, like, when we think about it, when we're it, we're in denial of dying anyway. Yeah, like sure. even right now, right? Oh, of, of course. Of our personal death, we're we're like, oh, it's, well, yeah, it'll happen, but not today. But it could happen <laughs> in we, seconds. And we <laughs> could, and we could, and what I'm saying is, like, we could be 90 years old and we'll still be. It ain't gonna happen today. Yeah, right. Oh, I'm not dying for a while I'm yet. Dying no. <laughs> I'm still here. Yep. I'm still alive. Yeah, well, you know, and you know, my, my grandpa had one of those. That would like, be Eddie Vedder in a couple of years. That's Eddie Vedder right now, I'm sure. 
Well, remember that song's th- dude, that's that song's like thirty years old, you know. It is. Yeah, it is. It's, so it is. it is thirty years, probably this year, two thousand two. Uh, I think was it ninety three or ninety two when that was popping. Ninety two, ninety three, right around now. Something like uh, that. Ninety two. Okay, so yeah, dude, it's like thirty years old that song. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, so he might <laughs> he might be in the hip hop wow. or the um rock and roll nursing home. Nah, because he was what maybe like twenty something then. So yeah, he's well, he'd be like, fifty something now. So probably. Yeah, that's not really that bad. No, I don't. <laughs> they're doing they're doing okay. They're making some all right music, but their old stuff was you know. That was better. Yeah, <laughs> it was better. No, it was it was it was just imprinted in our minds because it, at that time yeah. it was everywhere. Still better. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, because it, it obviously made more of a mark. You know what no, I'm saying? It's better. Yeah, like you're better. still singing those yeah. songs. You know. So. Yeah. No kidding. And that's but, that's uh, another thing about grief about music. Like God, why can't music be any near as it was? Before? Yeah. Well, yeah, that too. Okay. No yeah, like how it how it sounds now versus how it was, and you know. You're kind of going, oh, man, what happened to that? We're, gr- we're grieving that, too. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you can. Well, sometimes you could, I guess, you know. But I, I want to go back to something, though. Um, and that's talking about grieving about somebody who's not dead and still there, but you can't. You Because you, okay. here, here's an interesting idea. You know someone is not good for you, yet you cannot not deal with them because they're part of your family or they're part of something else. And oh, that yeah. You have to deal with. So, but you know that previously you had great times and you were close to them, but you've realized you can't deal with them, but you have to, maybe, you know, right. whatever it is, family, divorce, kids, whatever. You got so they're toxic. So, but they're toxic. So you're grieving their loss, yet they're not gone from your life. And it kind of goes back to the other thing, like maybe it's a friend or something like that. So, so you're like, you know what? I don't want this person in my life anymore. But I can't get them out of my life, so I'm still like saying, Not to "Get you out of my life." <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Yep, yep. What, what do you guys feel about that? And well, and and you're right. This is kind of like, damn, I can't just cut this person off. I have to deal with them. I have to be around them. I, I think you at that point you start making, uh, you know, where you say, "All right, short doses, short doses," you know, and you you kind of have your own little uh, defense mechanism to deal with that problem. You yeah, know what I mean? You, you feel like you have that in your life, obviously. Where you're just oh, like, I can, you know I can, what? Yeah, I'm speaking yeah. personally. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you know, like, there's people that you love dearly, you care about dearly, but you've realized and you've had to just make the fucking realization that they are just not not good for you emotionally no. or, or whatever, right? No. Like, so you do the small doses thing. You hang around them once in a while and you're like, all right, that was fun. That was good. But uh, as far as getting closer to that person or – trying to you know hey let's move in together man let's do the, no ain't happening it's creating boundaries yeah you do you have to create your own boundaries like nope nope yeah sorry brother ham ain't feeling that yeah so. and it's, but it's also just like an idea of like you're never going to be that close to this person like it's almost like a, that's, that's kind of where i'm going like you know you know like you, you realize there are certain people that you've, you've put a lot of time into in terms of just hanging out with yeah Maybe i'm just so crass i'm just like fuck it yeah, yeah. Maybe, well, maybe, well, that's the maybe. thing too. You you kind of know, like, okay, they're no good for you. So then you, you just, after a while, you accept it. You're just like, right. you know, I I can't be around this person all the time. They're gonna piss me off or upset me or whatever. So knowing but, this going in, you yeah. Know, but when it's someone like a family member or a brother, when you've spent your whole life and you finally realize this person doesn't give a fucking flying fuck about you, really doesn't, you know, what I'm saying doesn't know you. It's yeah. Like a, that's what I, that's where I'm kind of going with this grief, like like this like shock of, damn, this person's never going to actually see me for who I am, who I am, even though I've known them all their fucking lives. Damn, well, well and that's I have the- to fucking go to fucking Thanksgiving dinner with them and see them all the time. Damn, but then there's a grief because I know that I'm never going to be in that person's life the way that I want to because they can't see me that way. Does right. that make sense? Like, yeah. when you, like like knowing that someone's mentally, you know, unstable or something like that, uh, NPD or, or BPD, and it's like they're not going to. But here's the deal. Like, why, I think you might have to look at why it's important that you feel like, like, can't you just say, you know what, he's a family member, I have to deal with him, uh, but I don't have to like him and he doesn't have to like me. Well, that's what couldn't I've done. That, that's what I've done. Couldn't that be a situation that you could, you could 
put yeah, yourself I, in? Or I've, do, I've that... done that. And that's the thing. You, you're making the boundaries. You're going, okay, me and this well, yeah. dude don't get along. Let's just, you know, enjoy the little time. You know, hopefully it won't, there won't be any but bullshit. My, my point isn't about that. My point is about the feeling afterwards, that grief, because you know you can't mend that relationship. Like you tried so many times, but you, but you, but you still have to deal with that. Sure. Person. Actually, Thanks. for me, it's, it's almost like like almost like the Walking Dead, like like they're dead to you because you can't reach them in terms of them being actual people that you want to be right. with, but you have to deal with them. So it's like a, a Walking Dead. Like, well, how do you deal with this person when they before it was like we're hanging out, we're doing all this stuff, and then you realize this person, you know, is just fucking broke. Actually, but for still, me, well, does that make sense? Saying, uh, you know, create. Yeah. yeah, but like Max was saying, create boundaries for one, yep. Uh, yep. whether it's physical or mental boundaries. And yep. then two, like, just accept the fact that they're going to be dicks to you. They're going to be the yeah. way that they are. Right, and, and you expect and, it. And the reality is, is that sometimes they're, sometimes they're actually not, right? So yeah. like they the short burst thing that Max was talking about, I like that too, because it's like, you know, um, <laughs> My my sister in law and my wife, they can get along in short bursts. Yep. yep. But if you stick them together for like more than an hour, mm -mm, nope. Yep. Nope. Nope. And nope. that's that's kind of so... how. Yep. Yep. No, I I have the same thing with a family member of mine. You know where? All right. You know, small doses. We'll, we'll go to dinners and shit. But you know, I just kind of know like don't let this person get in too close. You know what I mean? And, and I, for me, I've accepted it. I, it's nothing that I've, been, I've yeah. really grieved over or been, a, you know, I'm just like, okay, mm -hmm. this is how this person is. They're never going to change. So uh, rather than beat my head on the wall and try to make, you know, make things better. I'm just like, Hey man, let's just take what we got here and, and yeah. enjoy and that. It, that. That's a great way. Of, but I know we talked about that. this before me and Max are very logical about things and, and Cruz, I mean, there's nothing against you, but you're very emotional about things. That's true. He puts more emotion yeah. into it. I think I'm emotionally I mean, it logical. It doesn't mean that you're less of a person. Just a different you way just, of handling you stuff. Of, well, you think of things, you think of things in a totally different, you think of things in a totally different way than we do. Like we're, we're more, we, we think of things logically. It's like, oh, well, if they're being dicks, well then create boundaries. Boom. Yeah, over, exactly. You know? That's problem solved. And, you and know, for you, sometimes it's like, you have to go through that. You got to go through that process where it's like, oh man, it sucks that they're not in my case. Okay, right, right. Now I'll create my boundary. Right. I'll, like I'll your, your thing, you get a little more emotional and you're like, oh man, why do they have to do oh, shit? You know, where I'm like. Man, they're just dicks. They're just gonna be a dick, and so fuck them. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. nothing I can do about this person at this point. See, I, so, I think yeah. of it. I think of it a little bit differently. I think about that. I'm, I'm thinking logically through emotions because emotions are predictable if you know what you're looking for. Like, like mm. do like, tell. Well, like, like you, you you have to figure out things emotionally. Like it's almost like a balance between logic and emotion. Like you guys are like, oh, I'm so logical. But it's almost like you have to like counterbalance between the emotion and logic, which is why I'm talking about grief in terms of like, because first of all, you don't even realize how fucked up you are when someone close to you dies for years, most of the time, like, or, or at least for a long time, in my opinion, because the, the, the moment that someone you, you see, you hear someone dies, like, and I'm, I'm talking about like the actual death, like a, a sudden death mm -hmm. or, or any kind of death, like, like right. for instance, like like right. yeah, you know, like if you know someone's going to, like if you find, oh my god, someone dies, your mind is coded in fucking this gloop of fucking endorphins to stop you from losing your shit. Well, you hope. I, I, well, <laughs> no, you hope, but some it people actually will. Really, you know. Well, yeah, some people will lose their shit, but but even then, after that, they'll they'll go into this numb state. It's it's, it's a shock state. Like I've been there before, and I, I think. It's almost right. like like a like a blanket over your whole goddamn bot like mind. Well, it depends so, too. So my, so my point is that that can happen to a lot of in, in a lot of ways. Yeah, I mean, it depends too because certain people, like we said earlier, everybody deals with things differently. So somebody might not experience that blanket of of shock, but they might have a whole bunch of other stuff going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. So very. So I guess what I'm in terms of like talking about like not being. I guess I definitely am more emotional. I definitely am on the more emotional level on that. Um, 
but I don't think it's not backed by at least a bit of logic. So I just got to, I got, I got, I got to correct you on that. At least, I, I mean, you. you know what? Ne neither are bad. It wasn't like a a, a diss. Like uh, real more you, logical. You, than you can, you can, you can defend yourself. It's okay. I don't. Know. <laughs> I, I don't mind you defending yourself, but I meant no offense by it. <laughs> I know you. I know you. Did. Exactly. Yeah, it wasn't like we are the logical ones. <laughs> I just, I just you are controlled by emotion. Things in different ways. Honestly, I size, I've been criticized by other counselors for being that way. They're like, "What? What is wrong with you? Are is something wrong with you? Like, how do you not there's feel nothing, the person's emotion? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with you. And in fact, I'm I'm pulling back a little <laughs> bit. So so I got a little bit more emotional than I should have. See. You see, and that's exactly yeah, the point. Yeah, I yeah. am, I am more emotional, and I have to accept yeah. that too. In some ways, right. yeah. Like sometimes you just gotta like, all right, I am, I it, am it, an emotionally it's more different ways. It's yeah. it's positive. I mean, sometimes it's good because uh, you know, like you've called me machine man in the past because there's certain things that I'm just like, ah, fuck <laughs> it. You know, when really I should probably be a little more emotional than I am when, when it comes yes. to that particular situation. You know, yes. that's interesting. It's so interesting how different people interact and how different people understand grief. Because for me, uh, grief is like uh, like a loss that, you know, like you guys are like, grief is, uh, you, you're definitely more more drier in some ways than I'm thinking about. Maybe. I mean, I think we all come to the general agreement, though, that uh, grief is a, is a change, a loss, a, loss, yeah. a change in your life somehow. And it's not a gain. It's not a gain. It's, it's a loss. It's, it's a horrible thing that happens to you. That Actually... That Right. A gain could be grief. No, no, it's a horrible thing that can't. Yes, that happens to you. That can lead to better things later on. But right. I want to, I want to go down this rabbit hole. What are you that, talking about? That's right. what I'm saying. Well, uh, because okay, like uh, if you gain something, sometimes okay, let's say oh, you're go. a kid, and all of a sudden <laughs> your parents, you know, wind up having another kid, <laughs> and you're going. Ah, fuck, man. You know, now this little fucker's gonna be man. It's not gonna be the same. And your whole world, I, you know, I got to tell you, man, I had a, a, a dream when I was in high school that my mom wound up having another kid. And it was like a right. baby. And I'm like, what the fuck? You know, and it, it actually fucked with me. So sometimes yeah. a gain. Okay, so the gain, so, so the loss can be disguised as a gain. But what you really feel like you're losing is your relationship with your mom. Right, exactly. Because so you know, you know, all that, all that energy is going to be put yeah, in. There, the there's all, there's always a loss left there. out. Yep. It's always a loss yeah. for you yourself, and that's what grief is. It's like yeah. a loss for you yourself. It's like yeah. a loss for like something that you're I, like. I, I get where he's coming from, but I think I think it's always even if it's a gain, quote unquote. I think it's a loss in disguise. True, and like you had pointed out, it's the loss of your relationship that you had with your your parents. You know, now it's going to be different because the little kids right. come in, and you're yeah. going to be chopped liver. You know, <laughs> so <laughs> right, Fuck, right. Man. We can go down this road for an hour, actually. A lot of good shit on that, though. You but know, seriously. But the bottom line, though, not the bottom. I keep saying that. Uh, grief, grief is is something that happens all the time, every day. <laughs> right. It's not. It's not like oh, you, you grieve. Yeah. You grieve losing the. You, you grieve losing your your a uh, chicken sandwich because unfortunately it fell to the bag and landed in the. You know, in the toilet like, or something, yeah. Or something. Like <laughs> you grieve not having cheese on your fucking. Well, I think, I think, I think in those in those situations, you go through the grieving process a little bit faster, of right? Course. You're just yeah, like, yeah. yeah, okay. Oh man, that sucked. That sucked, but okay, fine. Well, whatever. All right, right that's right. fine. Let's go on to something else. However, hardcore grief is nothing to fuck with. Oh no, it, it ain't. But, it ain't anything to right. fuck with. And 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 I think maybe we should go. Right. Just well, that's those drastic change, like we're saying, like something that really changes your life in some way. Well, let's let me. I don't want to be too specific, but um, my buddy uh, who's doing the improv group with us, he had a death in his family. Oh, and, okay. Uh, his his and it was a sudden death, and his father is lost. Oh, He's completely lost, and he, so he has to be out there for like a, a long time. Um, so I'm I'm running the group myself, which is great. You know. Well, not great, so, but you know what I, I could do. You're it, kind of but, taking the reins while the he's. The point is that he has to be out there because, it, it, you know, he can't process it because that's just a massive amount of instant grief. Like, it's, it's like it's almost like like it's hard to it's hard to describe. I, I would I, I I don't even know how to describe it. It's almost like um, when my my buddy when I I was uh, in a kid as a kid 
uh, about 13 years. No, I was like 15, 16. Um, I was, it was in the summer, so I was crashed in the afternoon, took a nap. I had, I got shooken awake um, by a guy named Steve, who's a friend of ours. He was crying. And he goes, hey, man, Brian's dead. And it was my next door neighbor about two doors down. Uh, oh, shit. He had, he had died. He, he was in a, uh, a Cub Cub accident. Damn. And and uh, basically, the, the truck rolled over, and he threw out, He was thrown out the window, and it rolled over, and it killed him. Whoa. Um, and so you had three other people. It's, if you look it up in the early 90s in Vegas, you can actually find uh, the whole bullshit about it. That's, for, that's a, probably a very... Uh, but you know that's it's so sudden, but it's gotta yeah. fuck with and, you, you know. But, but that's the whole point. It's it's just it's absolutely like just right mm. there. Like like that's like you don't even know, you know. And that so that's that's kind of the same thing that happened with him is that he had to do. So his dad is like completely you know lost, you know. So he needs some help at this point. So, oh, totally. So grief grief is nothing to fuck with, and and it's it's. And I, and I, I think I can't, we kind of like when you're talking about grief about oh grief about losing your burger on you know right. Well, we exactly. went through a lot of different facets of it. You know what it could yeah. be. So and but like we were saying, you know, grief does appear for some people in different ways. Like some oh, yeah. people can actually have have the blanket of shock right for a long time. Um. If you were to if you were to bring up your dad today and like really start thinking about it, would you cry? Because that's what happens with my that's what happens with my uh, my wife. Her grandfather was kind of like her dad. I mean, her dad's still around, but her, it was like her second dad in a way. Mm. And I swear, I mean, if you talk about him long enough, she will cry. It's just wow. a matter of time, you know. I guess, yeah. And, and this was like this was like what uh 17 you know 19 years ago and yet you bring him up and you talk about him for a little bit it's she's fine you talk about him for a little bit too long boom the tears come well like, and you know wow. what man see there is no timeline and i think this is another another deal yeah. we should cover exactly there's yeah. no timeline on yeah. grief yeah. man because some people do say well yep. come on man that was like five years ago get over it you know hey grief is going to work as long as it needs to so you yeah, know. Exactly. That, that, that definitely exactly. is a that definitely is a point. But also, we have to watch out for the crutch, which is True. which is because I've seen it happen in, in person. Well, they use it as a crutch. When they yes. use it and go, "Don't ever tell me I have to get over my blah 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 because I'm not doing this this this." Because I'm a victim, and I have I, this now. This is going to be a thing that because, I'm going to use because it definitely does happen in that way too. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. You're right. Um, well, we knew somebody cruise control that did that. You kind of use that um, yes. a loss or as a you know some kind of way to play victim and and feel sorry for me that kind of deal you know. Well, but but it's because they actually feel that and that's that's the scary part about it. it's like we don't they actually are still devastated by it. You know? Oh yeah, like, you, you, like they can't get over it, and, and that that happens. What the, yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Well, that's it. Like we're saying, <laughs> well, so let's 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 break up that fucking serious shit because I heard fucking. What the hell was that, dude? I, I burped and he sneezed. Did it come? Did, did it kind of go together? Like you know? Yeah, I, dude, that, that was, was that was no. Cool. I, I didn't. I didn't sneeze. He laughed. I just laughed at your burp. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So that's, I burped and he that's laughed. That's what I got. That's what I got from it. I, I got. He went. He went. He went. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's what happened. Because it just came out of nowhere. Like what yeah. the hell? Well, you know, and that's just, that's just me. I'm just so relaxed here. I just, and that's belch. the way life is. It can come out of nowhere. You could be exactly. walking down the street and get butchered. That's, by the, a... that's the way grief is. It could come out of nowhere. Right? It yeah. could, it could. And all of a sudden a situation so, so happens. What is, what is the difference between grief and regret? Oh, Ooh. I, I actually, well, I think I have an answer for that, but go ahead. I, you first, Lee. I think they're, I, w I would like to say that they're intertwined. And the only yeah. thing that I would say it's about definitely that. Something, yeah. yeah. And the only thing I would say about that is regret has to do with a lot of what's called, what they call guilt and shame. Right. And there is some, there is some guilt and shame involved in grief sometimes because it's like what they, what they say is that you love them before. they. Yeah. Die. What, yeah. what if I could have said this? What if I could have said this? Would that have salvage the relationship, what if I did a or, relationship? Or, yeah exactly right or or what if i didn't get a chance to say this to my dad who's now dead right 
And I really, 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 really wanted the chance to say it. But now I, you know, there's nothing I can't, yeah. I can't go back and turn back time. So it's like, oh man, I wish I could have said that I loved him. I wish I would have said, you know, all this. And it's like, you can't do anything about it. So there is some, there is some regret. I think they go together in a sense. Um, but sometimes, you know, regret, regret, I think is, could be by itself as well. Oh, Maybe it can be. Necessarily it can be. Evening, but, oh, absolutely. It can be. But, yeah, uh, but it can definitely be a component of, um, of yes. grief too. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So, yes, sir. Like you using those big words over there, Max. Oh, oh thank you, man. I've been, yeah. reading my, oh, wow. I've been reading my Oxford Dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> I've been reading my, oh, getting my English on, you know? All right, kids. So, anyway. A component. A component. A component. A component. Oh, he likes my, my $50 word, man? Goddamn. Yeah, it's like, like a $20 it. word. He said Not component. A a three-syllable word. <laughs> three set of three-syllable word. <laughs> Component. He, he was surprised, uh, Max. You might want to talk to you. You might have a conversation about that. <laughs> <laughs> he was surprised you, you actually put a three-syllable like, wow, word. Dude, why, why, are you trying to, why are you trying to start stuff, Cruz? You little <laughs> that, that, that's what I do, motherfucker. You use big words. <laughs> Thank you. Do that mean I'm smart? Instigator, I beat you. I use four four syllable words. Oh, there you go, man. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> wow. Well, all right, right, kids. Let's. Uh, we got anything else to roll with this? Because I, I, you know, it's obviously about I mean, not, Yeah. Yeah, we can keep going. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, there's so much that you could possibly talk about, but I think we've kind of, you know, scratched the surface horse. on just on the subject. Yeah, you know, got off track. Actually, I don't think we really did, guys. There's nothing I think, wrong with I that. Think we were very. Uh, this is one of the uh, few shows in a long time we actually stayed on topic. You know, we didn't jump around. I guess that's true. Maybe, I felt we, we should did. Talk after, maybe we should talk after the show about that whole. Oh, we should stay on topic, kind of Ooh, thing. Stay on topic. <laughs> stay on topic, huh? <laughs> Anyways, I don't know. I think it's cool. I think it's cool as well. We rocked the shit again. Hey, kids, uh, subscribe and uh, keep like. notice. Like. Subscri- subscribe and like. Subscribe and like. Uh, I guess. And share. Gonna, and share. And share, too. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. This is the uh, Nothing Sacred Shrink Wrap for August 2022. I am Cruz I am Maxwell Silverhammer. And I'm Louis Loke. And, and that's, that's the story. The story there. There. Yeah. See ya. <laughs>